Hi there, uh, this is uh, Ajmal the developer and welcome back to another uh, crash course on uh, type, TypeScript. Um, so in this course we'll be looking at uh, TypeScript uh, uh, technology and we will uh, try to cram as much information as we can in this uh, short uh, uh, crash course. So what is TypeScript? TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript and it, has, uh, it was developed by Microsoft. Uh, superset uh, means that it has everything that is in JavaScript plus some more features. Uh, for example, uh, it has some uh, uh, some statically static ch ch sorry type checking. For example, it uh, checks the um, data types uh, of variables and um, different properties uh, um, so it, it, it really is a, a superset that man it has a lot of different features uh, plus all features that are inherited from JavaScript so it compiles to plain JavaScript because uh, the browser as well as the node engine doesn't read uh, TypeScript so therefore your TypeScript code would first be compiled or transcompiled to JavaScript uh, and then um, interpret it to your machine. Also, it's easily easily integrated into JavaScript projects. Um, so therefore, um, TypeScript is uh, very compatible with JavaScript. Uh, also, it's designed for development of large applications. You can also use it for small applications, but it would be a waste of extra steps uh, of TypeScript. So what does TypeScript offer? Uh, type, TypeScript is a static uh, type checking. It has a static type checking. Uh, it means that um, all of your functions and variables, uh, you can check their types. For example, you can check to see if they're a string or, or, uh, or array. Um, great thing is you don't have to do it type uh, type checking is optional another benefit is that it, it is it is class-based uh, uh, object if you have worked with uh, java or php languages you would know what uh, class-based objects are and uh, versus javascript that you would have to uh, go through prototyping which is uh, pretty confusing so definitely class-based object is uh, one of the benefits uh, another great thing is it has modularity, meaning that you can import different modules and different uh, components uh, and libraries. Also, it has the ESX features, uh, uh, such as uh, arrow functions. Um, and overall, uh, the syntax is closer to higher uh, level languages, such as Java, Scala, and PHP. So what are the benefits of static type checking um, one benefit is that it is completely optional so you don't have to do it if you don't want to but if you do do um, type checking it, it helps you prevent bugs and stop uh, future issues from happening so that's one of the benefits and um, it makes your code much more readable and descriptive if you do um, uh, do type checking. Uh, uh, it, it, it makes your code very robust. Type script type. So we have these basic um, uh, types uh, or data types, uh, which is a string, number, boolean, array, any, which which means any any type. Um, we also have void, which doesn't return any type. Uh, we have null or undefined, as well as we have um, tuple, um, which is an array with a fixed number of elements. Also enum, which is enumerated values, as well as generics, uh, which specify the type of constraint. So another uh, advantage of uh, using TypeScript is that it is a class-based uh, objects. It has class-based objects. So it, you can use true object-oriented programming within your TypeScript uh, code base. So you, you won't have to use prototypes anymore. Uh, you can use encapsulation. So meaning that you can keep the functionalities uh, and behaviors of a certain class within that class so that you can reuse it later. 
as well as you can use inheritance so that you can have subclasses and inherit the functionalities of a parent class and you can have a modifiers which are like public protected and private um, classes so one thing to keep in mind is that the TypeScript files cannot be read by the um, um, browser engine or uh, Node.js uh, and because of that we have something called TSC which is the TypeScript compiler and it is written in TypeScript, uh, TypeScript itself so it compiles the JS files to .ts files. Mm. Uh, it's also installed as a npm package manager manager in Node.js, and it supports all the six features. So without further ado, let's get it started and start coding. So before you do anything, you want to make sure you download the latest Node.js version on your machine. Whether you have Windows or Mac or Linux, you want to make sure you install the latest package so that you can run your TypeScript on your machine. And um, in terms of texting, I would like to use uh, Visual Studio Code. Um, so you can also use download the VS uh, code. Uh, and um, because the reason why I wanna download VS code is because it's very user friendly and it has a lot of features and functions that can highlight your uh, different parts of your code and um, if you do have an error it'll uh, prompt you so so I would recommend using TypeScript and um, before doing anything I want you to install the TypeScript on your machine using your um, command prompt so you go to your command prompt and run it as the administrator you wanna so I'm gonna minimize it a little bit so the way you would do that would be to just uh, type npm npm is the node package manager and you want to install you don't have to install it in any specific folder you can just go with the root folder and install it globally so it would be installed in, in your whole machine so you would do install dash g type script like so on. enter and that'll uh, actually take a few minutes to install but because i already had installed the typescript on my system it took uh, a few minutes uh, or a few seconds to install so i have it installed uh, in my system now what i want to do is i want to go to my folder where i do my development which is um, that path here so we're going to make a folder in this path um, so we take advantage of mkdir or make a directory and we're going to call it sand sandbox or or actually ts sandbox um, so typescript sandbox and we're going to change directory to typescript sand sandbox and we're in there so what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually go to that folder here uh, the one that we just created so we're gonna go to that fol folder open the one that we just created so we select that folder and we're gonna create a simple uh, file here and we're gonna call this file types.ts and uh, let me minimize that here we're just going to do a um, console.log hello from ts and save that Uh, download the TypeScript uh, using npm um, you can what you can do is you can compile this uh, types.ts uh, file to a JavaScript file and the way to do that is to, to use a TSC command and just simply type the name of your 
TypeScript file, which is types.ts in this case, and then enter. And that should take in a few seconds. There you go. And if you look at the Visual Studio code under the uh, folders, you have types.js file, which is identical. And that is because we haven't put anything in our TypeScript file. So you want to write your commands in your TypeScript file and uh, compile them to a JavaScript file. So that's why you need these two different files. So now we have our typescript.ts and typescript.js files. Uh, now, if you were to add another file and call it index.html, and in the index will just uh, add a simple boilerplate. And uh, this is very important. You need to add the uh, a script uh, source a script tag and also link it to your JS file so you would just write the script and link it to types dot js file and close off your uh, script tag and save that and if you were to uh, run this on our Chrome or on our uh, browser, any browser would be fine. So I'm using the uh, live, uh, uh, live serving uh, extension. You can see over here we have our hello world uh, uh, message popped up in the in the browser. So you, so this is how it's done. So if we open up the console here, um, console so. Uh, where is our console here? So if you if you see here, it says hello from ts, which is the message come that comes from types.ts files. So we're not going to touch the types.js, the js file. We're only going to compile what's in the ts to js file and uh, do most of our coding uh, in the ts and compile it to js, as well as we'll work with uh, index.html file. So let's go ahead and do some coding here. Uh, let's uh, declare a variable and let's call it uh, my string column. A string is the data type. My string equals Hello world. And uh, let's console.log that. And save that. And we need to compile that. So you would do again TSC types dot ts and enter and if you go here um, if you see we have compiled everything in that js file and if you pay attention here it doesn't have any uh, it doesn't have the string uh, value here this one here we don't have it here because it gets compiled down to the basic uh, JavaScript um, uh, code. So it would be a pain in the neck to every time compile after every change we make to our .ts file. And we have a special um, special um, command for that. And uh, it's called uh, the watch mode. So what we can do is we can set our compiler to watch mode so that every time we make any change, it uh, gets compiled automatically and to do that you will type t tsc name of the pile of the file types.ts and you do a space dash w for watch and enter and as you can see it says start compilation and watch mode and it also shows if there is any error let's uh, throw an error uh, on purpose here change this string to a number and as you can see it gives you error and let's save that and it also says uh, 
type number is not assignable to type string so it gives you the error right in your uh, command uh, uh, consoles which is pretty neat you can also see that in your vs code if you hover over the my string you'll see that uh, it tells you that the type number is not assignable to type string however if you go to our console uh, on the browser we get the number here um, because this is for users not for developers so uh, we don't want the error to show here anyways let's um, change this back to uh, the way it was and uh, let's declare a number so we're going to call it my num and we're going to give it a value of 22 my num 22 Actually, we have to declare this up there just like the string. So we're going to do a var my num is uh, a number. And then we come down here and do my num equals 22. And then instead of my string, let's console.log my num. And save this and it, we, we get no error, no error here because uh, my num is um, number we have declared the data type to be a number here and if you go to our console we get 22 with no error to a boolean so var my bool equals uh, we gave it a not equals but we just give it a type of boolean and you come down here let's do my bool equals true and if you console dot log my bool and save it we get no error And um, you can see that uh, you can see that it's true and there is no error. And if you were to set this to false and save it, again, we have false in the console and there is no error. And if you were to deliberately give it a wrong data type, for example, two, we should get a uh, error and good sure enough we have error here type number is not assignable to type boolean so you can see we're checking the uh, types the data types uh, hence uh, type script i want to show you a few things with number uh, for example integer either negative or positive uh, will not throw any error uh, or uh, we can do a uh, expression 5 plus 5 will not throw an error also we can do an integer for example 5.2 sorry not integer but decimal uh, shouldn't throw any error we can also do hexadecimal for example 5x 5d00 save pause resume we can do hexadecimal and it shouldn't throw any error for example 0xf00d shouldn't throw any error so there is no error as you can see pause resume so with a string we can do concatenation for example we can do hello plus uh, space plus uh, world and if you were to copy that and uh, console.log that it gives us hello world so there is no error 
we can also do functions in the string for example we could do hello dot slice which is a method index of zero and uh, three and save that there is no er error and it uh, gives you index zero to three which is hel pause resume we can also do my var and give it a type of any or let's do my uh, or var my var give it a type of any and um, let's uh, do my my var equals pause resume so we can do my var equals say one and we pass that and run it it works and it doesn't give you any error and if you do say true and run it it runs with no error and if we were to do string and run it it also works why because the uh, type is any meaning it could be anything a string number boolean null anything pause resume so these are all simple data types now let's look at the array data types and for that we can do var um, str or string array uh, we'll, we'll give it a string uh, data type but we have to add these uh, square brackets at the end and then if you come down here and do a um, uh, for example um, my str or just uh, str array and um, equals we'll pass in some values here hello world and console.log that str array and if you save that we get no error and we get hello world uh, let's uh, comment this out because we don't want to print that out and if we do um, we can also do number array for example we can do var num r and we give it the data type of number and we can do we can pass in here not there but down here num r equals um, one two three and pass in num array or num array and save it we get one two three And if you were to add uh, an sort of string here, just add another number. And uh, pass that in a state here. It throws an error. However, we get the uh, number printed out uh, for user, but we do get error here. So we don't want that. Uh, same thing for number, if you were to uh, add a string for example and pass in this we 
we get one two three plus the string however we get a error underneath here and we can also do a um, boolean array for example we can do we can do bool r equals uh, maybe true false true and pass in why are we getting error here bull array true false true true false true Hmm. Uh, this uh, why is why are we getting this? Oh yeah, because I didn't initialize it here. So we first thing we need to initialize that for bool r. We give it a boolean data type, and that should get rid of the error. As you can see, we still have error. Uh, oh, not, I misspelled true. There you go, so we have true, false, true. And if you pass in say three, we still get three. However, we get an error here underneath um, in the compiler. So we don't, we don't wanna add in uh, different data types. So there is another way to declare your um, a string number and boolean array is to do it this way let's comment uh, this out so it would be to use the uh, angle brackets so you would do var str array and you just write the word array and pass in the angle brackets and in between the angle brackets you pass in the data type so we can pass in the two more times and change this to my num and pass in number here Change this to bool and pass in boolean data type. All right, and it still it works. Um, oh, we shouldn't have this here. There you go, no errors. So that's another way of doing uh, or declaring uh, arrays uh, within different. Uh, data types uh, we don't need now let's do a tuple uh, so we'll do var str num tuple and we pass in a um, string as well as a number and when you do uh, pass in your values here um, a string and number should uh, match match the arguments that you pass in uh, like so uh, we're gonna come down here we're gonna pass in the str num tuple equals to hello which is a string and uh, four which is a number and we console the lock string num tuple save this there is no error and we have string hello and number four if we were to change this string to say four number four um, and change num number to say hello and 
save that it'll throw error because let let's do it this way actually um leave that number first and just change this force string to another number save it it'll throw an error and if we went the other way um, for example also change the number to a string and save that that wouldn't work either because your values should match exactly the same order as as you would declare them or initialize them first so that is that for uh, to num tuple or for tuple and if we were uh, or not we were but let's do um, let's also do uh, uh, void and define and null um, data types and for that um, we're gonna do say for my void my void uh, we can do my void 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 and uh, we can do let's copy this and print it my voice void my now now and we can do my uh, undefined undefined we can give it value of undefined undefined void void maybe um, instead of void let's do undefined as well and we got no error here if we were to pass in say my void here we get no error and we get undefined and if you were to to pass in my null here we get no error and we get the value null and if we were to pass in my undefined we get undefined and we get no errors here so with these three uh, data types that have undefined null or void values we can change these definitions for example if we change to change undefined to null and pass in the my void um, variable we we get we get our um, value or data type uh, we don't get any error but if you were to say pass in a number we should get a we should get a error we get an error and it says uh, my void void equals one found one error and the error is time number is not assignable to type void so for these uh, three data types you can only um, either assign them to undefined null or void for example we can assign null or undefined or void or not void but just null or undefined so these essentially these three different data types have the same meaning but uh, depending on the context uh, you can use them uh, for different scenarios so that will be it for our variable types now i want to move into functions so for that let's create a different uh, file and call it functions.ts 
and we're gonna come to our compiler and stop this batch and uh, let's do uh, uh, maybe let's do another ts command uh, we'll pass in this file's name so functions.ts and we're gonna have it in the watch mode so now we're watching functions.ts file and also we need to go to index and change this uh, link to functions all right so we can do a simple function and uh, let's call this get sum sum of a number so we can do num1 plus num2 arguments and uh, return num1 plus num2 and do a console.log do a console.log and we're going to pass in the function pass in our function and uh, give it some uh, argument of one and two and if you we were to save that uh, we get an error what would be oh i apparently i missed something here num1 plus num2 uh, function num1 oh not plus but a comma is what i should have put and save it there you go so we get no error and we get the sum of uh, or, or or we get the one plus four is um, five obviously um in this function we're not checking any type for now and to do that uh, we have to actually declare the types so the way to check the types would be to pass in uh, the uh, data types right after your argument so first one has to be number so you would do column and then you pass in the data type same thing for the next argument column and then number which is the data type as well as for the function itself you not you need to to identify the data type which is number again and if you come down here and we just pass in a string and a set of numbers that we have declared say a string and um, save that we get an error however we get it uh, printed out in our console for the user but we do have an error which is type string is not assignable to type number so in this scenario it, the compiler is checking for the data type the compiler is expecting number but the return gives a string so therefore it throws an error that is for function and we can also do variable so let's uh, comment this out and uh, declare a variable call it um, let's call it my sum and uh, assign it to a function and pass in num1 and num2 again num1 num2 and uh, return return num1 plus num2 and um, console.log our variable which is my sum and pass in uh, argue, arguments or numbers 3 plus say 5 and save that we get no errors and we get our value which is 8 let's add to this make it a bit more uh, complex so we're giving we're going to give it a data type of any as well as for the second argument we're going to give the data type of any however we want the function to return number not any and uh, we're going to come down here and uh, actually come down here and give it some condition 
so it's passing a if if condition and type for the check for the type of so type of num1 has to equal to a string a string and uh, num1 equals parse parse end num1 and uh, we're gonna actually copy this entire if condition and do it one more time for num2 just simply change this to num2 num2 and we're gonna return num1 plus num2 okay and save we get no error and if you were to change this to a string save it we get the same value with no error so you see here we can pass in both string as well as number so we have conditioned in such a way that it accepts both both a string as well as number using these uh, two if conditions as well as uh, data type as that we have declared here so we're gonna close off or comment out this uh, console.log here and do another function so let's um, let's call this function um, get name so we're getting first and last names we're gonna pass in a first name and we're gonna set it to a string data type and what happened here a string a string data type and we pass in a last name we set it to string data type as well we also set our uh, whole function uh, to string data type as well and we return return first name and we concatenate a um, space here last name and we're gonna console.log console.log r and pass in maybe any random name john say do and if we save that we get no error and we get john do here printed out in the console so we can also make um, one of the arguments uh, optional for example we can uh, make the last name optional in order to do that you would just simply add a question mark at the end of last name here and save we get no error um, uh, and uh, oh we need to to delete that from the console.log save that so we get uh, we get John here we're not getting any error because we're passing these uh, arguments here you have the option to use them or don't use them if you don't use them you, you don't get any, any error so that's the beauty of it so we can also do uh, a function that would return nothing so a void function and to do that you would just declare your function and we're gonna name it my void open and close brackets and colon and then you want to put in the keyword void and then open your curly braces and save as you can see we we have uh, we have zero error so it's working if we do return and uh, we, if we return a number for example three and save it we get an error so over here uh, in the 
administrator administrator command prompt we can see that type number is not assignable to type void and if we do if we get rid of that uh, value and save it that is fine as well because uh, you're not returning anything even though you have the return keyword there but we're not returning any value so therefore there is no uh, error so that is all for functions so now we're gonna close this out and um, create another file we're gonna call this interfaces interfaces.ts and as usual we're gonna go to our index and uh, link our index to interfaces file all right also as usual you want to go to your uh, um, CMD and um, do a control C uh, to uh, terminate this batch and uh, run that uh, function uh, sorry run the interfaces.ts file in the compile mode uh, watch mode here so you would do TSC name of the file which is interfaces.ts space dash w for watch mode and now we are watching uh, this file which is interface.ts and uh, uh, compiling as we go all right so we're gonna go back to our interfaces and we're gonna declare a function we're gonna call this function show to do open curly braces pass in a uh, argument and we want this to be um, uh, actually we have to declare another uh, curly braces so uh, we want this uh, to have a title and we want the title to be a string as well as we want it to have a text and we want the text type to be a string as well all right and uh, we're gonna open our another curly braces and uh, um, we're gonna do a console.log we're gonna do a console.log pass in our to do uh, dot dot title argument to do to do dot title um, we're gonna concatenate it with a space again concatenate concatenate the text part as well to do dot text and terminate this line uh, apparently we're getting an error here so let's uh, do a quick investigation so we have function shoe to do uh, then uh, oh my apologies this should not be curly braces but uh, just brackets so that should take care of the issue and we are still getting a text uh, the text uh, error in the text field here Hmm. Uh, okay. Text a string. Uh, oh, not show to do, but to do. All right. And we can we loop out of our function, and we declare a variable. We're gonna call this my to do, and initialize this with. We're gonna pass in the title and we're gonna name it and we're gonna give it a, a, um, a value of trash and for the um, text we're gonna pass in a value of um, take out the trash okay and we're gonna come down here and uh, and do our uh, and call our function 
so show to do and we're gonna pass in the uh, variable that we have declared above and let's control s save that okay no uh, no error that's great let's come here and refresh uh, we're we're getting uh, we're still getting function okay i see why um, we need to terminate this uh, browser and open another one because this is linked to our to our function file okay we're gonna close that screen come here and inspect again go to console okay uh, let's clear this clear our screen okay um, so the reason why we were getting error here was because in the index.html I had put .ts by mistake uh, that's wrong it should be .js because uh, we're calling the js file we're basically coding in .ts file and compiling to .js file so therefore .js file should be connected to our index but not .ts so just wanted to point that out um, now we see we get the trash which is the title and take out the trash which is the text and we get no error here so our function is working perfectly so we can actually improve this function here and create an interface that is way better and neater and uh, in order to do that i'm gonna copy uh, this this function here and i'm gonna leave this function here for your information uh, let's comment this out and we're gonna create an interface and paste interface and uh, call it to do we give it a title title of a string title with one T and we're gonna also give it a text text of a string as well and uh, we're gonna come down here and paste our function and over here we don't need this entire um, curly bracket and these messy messy way of um, declaring values because we already have declared them up here so this is a lot better and we're simply gonna pass in that uh, interface name which is to do so this inherits uh, the functionality of this to do uh, interface all right and uh, we leave the console.log the same and uh, we're also going to copy this uh, this text variable here and uh, paste it down here as well as we're going to um, copy this function call and paste it down here and save we shouldn't have any problem no problem and let's refresh we still get the same message so as you can see this way of doing um, an interface way cleaner and better than action than doing it the uh, this way i hope that makes uh, some sense so that would be all for our interfaces and now i want to move on to classes which is the last lesson so i'm gonna create another file and we're gonna call it classes dot ts uh, we're also gonna um, go to our uh, uh, terminal here control c uh, we're gonna terminate this batch and uh, do another tsc command of uh, classes dot ts and run it in watch mode all right so our classes.js is uh, compiled here and lastly we want to go to our js file 
and link our sorry go to our index file and link our classes.js to our index class all right save that come and close this come back to our classes.ts uh, and do our classes so uh, if you have worked with Java, PHP, or Python, you would know what classes are. Um, classes are basically, um, um, it's, it has the same syntax. So classes are, um, uh, the classes contain uh, two, different, uh, uh, two different parts, mainly properties and, uh, um, and f methods. So methods are basically functions within classes and properties are basically key value pairs oops i have uh, misspelled spelled here let's uh, change rename it it's classes like so classes or never mind uh it's uh, it's, it's it's fine um uh, i haven't misspelled spelled that okay so let's uh declare a class and call it uh user and we're gonna declare a few properties. So first one would be name, and it would be a string. And uh, next one would be email, and it will also be a string. And last uh, property would be age, and it would have the number data type. All right, so that those are our uh, properties, and let's come down here and um, declare a constructor method so basically um, constructor methods are uh, kind of functions that runs when you instantiate an object with this class so when you when you create this uh, um, this constructor we basically uh, uh, pertain uh, the the objects or uh, properties uh, and assign these properties to the constructor and let's go ahead and see that in action so you would just write constructor keyword open parentheses and we're gonna pass a name which is a string also pass an email which is also a string and lastly pass an age which is a number all right so we're passing the above uh, properties All right, uh, we're getting some kind of error here, maybe because we we're not returning anything yet. So uh, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Um, and um, something is called this keyword. Uh, I want to highlight that in a second. So name equals name. So when we do this, this dot name equals name, what we are doing is we're basically uh, pertaining uh, this name to our uh, properties. So we're, we're, we're basically saying that uh, this is the name that is uh, declared above. So that's the syntax basically to memorize in constructor methods. And uh, uh, likewise, we're going to do this dot um, email equals email. And lastly, we're going to do this dot age equals age. All right. And we're gonna do a console.log dot log and we're gonna pass in a string or a text uh, called user created user created and we're gonna concatenate this dot name we're gonna concatenate it with the username all right so that is our uh, class this is our class which is completed but now we have to call this class and assign it to a variable so in order to do that you would write a variable let's call it john and uh, equal new user open parentheses give it a name let's call this uh, user John Doe and uh, also 
give this user an email let's give jdoe at gmail.com and last but not least we're going to give him uh, age of 34 all right so let's um, save this uh, we're getting an error here for some reason file class.ts not found uh, class oh because we by mistake we changed the name so let's rename it class as 2s all right so now um no error found or found one error okay let's see what is the error here classes.ts expected okay now let's close this uh-huh uh, we're John new user John Doe oh yeah I forgot the comma here so there you go the mistake disappeared let's save this and run it there you go we have user created John Doe here so as you can see our function and our method and our uh, properties are working and we are able to call in our uh, class here and assign it to variable John and we have uh, the string user created John Doe so we can similarly do um, this dot uh, let's change it to um, age and save this see what happens there you go user created 34 similarly we can do email and save and we get the email just like that one more thing we can also do a console.log and uh, call uh, the user's uh, age or email directly so you can do console.log pass in the name which is john and we can pass in the age and if we run this we get 34 down here over here um, I want to try one thing. I want to make sure make uh, this field uh, this uh, property H private and Doing that I shouldn't be able to access it. This should throw an error. Although it does um, uh, This display in the user interface in the console here, but we do get an error here and the error is um, uh, Let's see an error. What does it say? It says property age is private and only accessible within the class user. So what, what it means is that this object is, uh, or this property is only accessible within the class user, meaning that you can only, you can only do a console.log from inside the class, but not from outside. Um, it, it, it is useful in some ways, but uh, in most ways it's not. In order to make it um, public, you can either write public here and save it this should work which is working it's not throwing an error or just leave it as it is there's one more uh, thing called protected so if we save this it throws an error um, let's see what the error message is property age is protected and only accessible within class user and its subclasses. So meaning that um, this property can be accessed uh, within this class as well as from its subclasses. Subclasses means the classes that inherit the class user. Um, so that would be the benefit of using protected keyword. And that brings us to inheritance, uh, class inheritance. And let's go ahead and, and uh, demonstrate that. You know what, uh, before getting to inheritance inheritance classes i want to show you a simple uh, method and let's go ahead and do that uh, we're gonna uh, comment out this uh, class uh, sorry we're gonna comment out this console.log part and uh, we're gonna go up here after the console.log within our class we're gonna come down here and do a um, simple method we're gonna call it register open close curly open close uh, round brackets and then open curly brackets and between the brackets we're going to do a console.log console.log 
open brackets. We're going to pass in the uh, name, this.name, concatenate it to a space, and then concatenate it, not to a space, my apologies, but concatenate it to uh, a string or a text that we're going to write is now registered. Okay, we're going to finish this line and save that. Let's go up here and see what we have in the console. Um, found one error. Uh, watching for file changes. Okay, found one error. And let's see what is the error. Cannot find name register. Um, oh, yes, because uh, we're supposed to declare it down here as well. Otherwise, it wouldn't work. So, John dot register. Now, save. This should work. Um, let's see here. It's not working for some reason. Um, mm -hmm. Problem is, uh, our method should be outside of that, um, that class. Uh, just one step outside, right after um, that bracket here. And that should take care of it. Now we don't have any error and we have John Doe is now registered. So we have created a sample method and concatenated to, uh, to, to the name, which is John. Well, let's get into some inheritance uh, class. So we're gonna comment this uh, name call here, comment out. And uh, also we're gonna comment this out, this part here. All right. Okay, so we're gonna comment this out and come down here right after our class and declare a class. We're gonna call this class member, member and uh, it extends, meaning that it inherits the objects from user class. So we're gonna pass in the the class uh, name, the user class name, and we're gonna open our curly brackets, and we're gonna pass in the um, property ID, which has a number data type, which should have a number data type, and we're also gonna do a kind of structure method, and we're gonna pass in the ID property, which is a number, as well as all these properties within our uh, class, uh, user class uh, method. We're gonna pass in all of that. We're gonna copy that and paste it here. And we open our curly bracket. And we need to do a, something called super call. So what super call is, it's basically calling all of these uh, uh, properties within our uh, parent uh, class so that we don't have to redeclare them such as this.name, this.email, this.h. So we would just basically do a super call and simply pass in the, uh, the, the keys, uh, uh, not the values. So that would be name, email, and age. I'm going to finish that line. We're also going to do a this.id because id is a new property. It is not inherited from our parent class of user. All right, so as you can see, we don't have to do this.name because we already have this.name equals name, this.email equals email, this.age equals age. We already have these properties uh, instantiated into our parent kind of structure method. So, so we're basically inheriting those properties from our parent class. So, all right. So that is basically an inheritance class. This whole thing is an inheritance class. So it is inheriting 
or extending from the parent class of user. So we can have a, another uh, function within our um, child uh, class and let's call this uh, um, function pay and voice. Pay and voice and uh, we're gonna do a super call here. So super dot pay and voice. And um, you can see we are we have an error here saying that property pin voice does not exist on type user, so it's not declared in, in the user. So what we need to do is we need to go to our parent class of user and actually um, initialize um, or, or write another function here because this function does not exist here, as you can see. So what we need to do is go right after the register function and create a pay invoice function. So pay invoice, and um, we're gonna do console.log and pass in the name property, concatenate it to paid invoice. All right, notice that the error went away. So now that we have created our um, member class, why don't we go ahead and uh, call this function and then uh, assign it to a member. So in order to do that, we're gonna come down here and do a var mic. Um, we're gonna give it a sub, the subclass of user uh, or the parent class of user. Um, and we're gonna equal uh, new member and we're gonna open brackets. Um, so ID would be ID would be one and uh, we're gonna pass in a string Mike Smith and we give Mike Smith an email of uh, Mike at gmail.com and we give Mike an age of 33 and we finish this uh, function call here and let's save this if there is if we have done everything correctly we shouldn't get any error and we haven't got any error so there is no error found in our console and up here in the browser we have user created mic at gmail.com okay so now that we have created Mike Smith and he is a member what we can do is we can call in the pay invoice function and um, indicate that Mike has paid his uh, invoices. In order to do that, we can actually um, go down here and do a function call and basically do a Mike uh, dot pay invoice function and save. And we have Mike Smith paid invoice. So I know it might be a little bit confusing for the beginners, uh, but I just wanted to cover everything. And the uh, last thing I want to do is to add an interface for our classes. And in order to do that, you would just write the keyword interface, um, and then we're going to call it the user interface. And we know that we have uh, properties such as name, which is a string, as well as um, email, email, which is also a string. We have age, which is a number, and we also need to pass in our functions. So we have register, register function, as well as uh, we have pay and voice function. All right, so we're gonna save and we got no errors, everything's running fine. So that is for our interface here. So we haven't covered everything within TypeScript. Uh, it's 
pretty basic. Uh, I know it's basic, but the things that we have covered are uh, variables, data types, uh, classes, uh, functions, interfaces, as well as types. So if uh, you want to keep going, there is obviously a ton of more stuff to cover, but I just wanted to do a quick crash course and cover the uh, basic building blocks of TypeScript. So that concludes our um, crash course for TypeScript, and um, I hope you do you learned and enjoyed some. Uh, so, so you learned something and enjoyed this course. Uh, and if you did, uh, hopefully uh, subscribe to this channel to grow this channel, as well as like or dislike whatever you can do is appreciated. And I will see you in the next uh, crash course. Bye for now.